Let's move from the basketball court to the weight room, where Sports Showtime reporter Jeffrey Crowden gives us a look at the women of LSU pumping iron. With the success of national championships in sports like football and track and field, smaller club sports like LSU women's powerlifting teams are often overlooked. But they're defending national champions and hope that they're able to handle the pressure and repeat and prove that LSU is one of the top powerlifting teams in the country. Always added pressure. Um, I wouldn't say added pressure. I'd say it's more like a, okay, we proved ourselves. Now we got to show it's not a fluke. <laughs> we really are that great. LSU may have the slight advantage because this year's Collegiate National Powerlifting Championship will be held here in Baton Rouge. Because Nationals is in Baton Rouge this year, we're going to end up having way more family and friends that can come. Last year it was in Denver and the year before it was in Killeen, Texas. So the travel costs and the missing school and everything was just too much for most people to handle. But because it's in Baton Rouge this year, we're going to have like the venue packed with people for LSU. So it's definitely going to be a home field advantage. LSU will also have one of their veteran lifters, Pam Bars, who has won two individual national championships over the past three years and hopes to win her third individual title as well as repeat on a team championship. We definitely go back and do it for a third time, but I've been working really hard this year and hoping I can win another title. With all the success of the women's part of the team, they're still down to earth and always try to have fun and encourage all women who are interested to join. There's Everyone from any walks of life come to the gym, and I'll just tell them not to be discouraged. It's fun, it's great, it's a like very positive atmosphere. You know, we push past mental boundaries and really teach a lot about just taking care of yourself, both mentally and physically. The LSU women's powerlifting team will try to repeat on the performance of a national championship from last year, March 27th through the 29th. Reporting for Sports Showtime, I'm Jeffrey Crowder. Some of the members of the LSU women's powerlifting team not only compete for LSU, but also internationally for the USA junior team. Well, it's time for our first commercial break, but when we come back, I'll sit down with basketball expert Jason Tiplett to further break down the men's basketball team's game against Ole Miss this weekend. That's right, Hope. The Tigers had a big SEC West matchup on Saturday. The Tigers were down late in the game. But I'll tell you what sparked the Tigers' late run to victory. We'll have all that and more when Sports Showtime returns right here on Tiger TV. We now welcome in basketball expert Jason Tiplett to further break down the basketball team's recent victory against Ole Miss. Jason, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Can't wait to look at the highlights. <laughs> well, let's take you straight to the highlights right now from Saturday's game. Bo Spencer sitting on the bench. He was out for the game and will be out for Wednesday's game against Arkansas. Yeah, Terry Martin fills in the starting lineup. Gary Temple fills in a point guard here. Nine assists, Terry Martin, 11 points, no turnovers. Could, Trent Johnson couldn't ask for a better job from the senior. Exactly, Jason. And then early in the game, a little swing out pass to Tasman Mitchell that drains the three. Tasman's continually hitting from three-point land and all over the court. Why is this, Jason? Co I mean, Hobie, it's his versatility. He can step out of the three. He loves that top three. But also, we're going to see in a minute, he likes to go down low. Nobody can handle him. Look at the little, little soft turn, little hook. Gets the roll. Taz Mitchell's playing at a high level right now. After now. LSU being on fire, Ole Miss storms back and then takes the lead above LSU after their huge run. Why did this happen, Jason? Lots of open shots, Toby. We saw usually the Tigers defense, a good defensive team. Not today. Not Saturday, excuse me. Gary Temple allows drill penetration. That's his strength. He allowed that Saturday. And Chris Johnson allows post entry. Look at this. Stormore needs to come here, collapse, help Chris Johnson. Doesn't happen. Again, Stormore is in the middle lane. He needs to help prevent this spin from happening. Easy bucket for Storm Miss. Warren. That's a huge freshman mistake. And then here, two big fouls on the same play. Coach Johnson very fired up. The refs not really seeming to care to his uh, actions right here. Here's the shot with the foul on it. Then as Marcus Thornton goes for the rebound, he gets hit over the head by an Ole Miss player. However, this, this just only fires up the team as there we go. Marcus Thornton hitting a three-pointer from the corner. And then the dish out to Tasman Mitchell for another trifecta. Back-to-back -back threes for the team. Great play as the fans get riled up. Johnson's fired up. And as the team goes on to win the game, the Tigers would hold on to win 73-66. This win has extended the Tigers' SEC winning streak to nine games and now have a full three-game lead in the SEC West. Marcus Thornton and Tasman Mitchell once again led the way for the Tigers as the two combined for 42 points. All right, Jason, most people around Baton Rouge are loving this right now. They love to see the Tigers get on this streak after last year. 
But as we know, all good things have to come to an end. Do you see any end in sight for SEC losses for this Tiger team? Well, Hobie, there's a ton of basketball left to be played. The Tiger still have to go on the road to face Kentucky and host Florida at home a week from today on Mardi Gras Day. As we know, the SEC is pretty weak. And outside of those matchups, I don't see the Tigers being pushed too hard. Kentucky's a, poten a potential loss since they play on the road at Rupp Arena, always a tough place to play, and Florida always brings their best. But as of late, the Tigers have just found a way to close down the stretch, so look for them to keep that up and have a strong finish to the regular season. Right now, they look like they got the SEC locked up, but you don't know. They really do. I mean, a three-game lead, that's huge. Great. Thanks for, thanks for joining us, Jason. Very wise words coming from our own basketball expert, Jason Tiplett. Now we kick it over to Mary Clara with the results of our online poll. Thanks, Toby. Last Thursday, we asked you to go online and vote where you thought the men's basketball team should be seated in the tournament starting that day. 22 people voted and a whopping 82% of you said they should be seated in the 4 to 10 range. Followed by three of you who were pretty generous giving the Tigers a 1 to 4 seed. And one uneducated basketball fan out there saying they should be lower than a 10 seed. Be sure to check out TigerTV.TV to give us your opinion on LSU sports. Well, this weekend, the Tiger track and field teams competed in the Tyson Invitational in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The women's team was led by pole vaulter Rachel Laurent. Her jump of 13 feet, 9 and 1 fourth inches matched her indoor personal best and was an automatic NCAA tournament qualifying mark. On the men's side of the action, freshman Robert Simmons ran a blistering time of 46.55 seconds, which earned him a third place finish in the meet and qualified him for the indoor championships as well. Sophomore weight thrower Walter Henning continued his domination by winning the event for the fourth straight time this season. Both teams will return home next weekend for their final meet before the SEC Indoor Championships when they host the LSU Twilight Invitational at the Carl Maddox Fieldhouse on Friday. The number 11 ranked gymnastics team rolled into Alabama last Friday where they upset the fifth ranked Crimson Tide. It was the first win for the Lady Tigers in Tuscaloosa since 1976. They were led by senior Ashley Claire Kearney as she reached a milestone of 100 career individual titles on the night with wins in vault, floor and the all-around title with a score of 39-5. The Lady Tigers would take the victory by a final score of 196-625 to the 195-75 posted by Alabama. You can catch the Lady Tigers in action this Friday as they host a tri-meet featuring North Carolina and Illinois Chicago at the PMAC at 7. Well, just because football isn't in season doesn't mean you can't get some hard-hitting action around Baton Rouge. The LSU rugby team was in, on, in action on Saturday when the, when the team took on the Texas Longhorns. The competition was, uh, was very one-sided as the Tigers would win by a final score of 58-3. The team will be on the field March 14th when they make the trip to Texas to go up against the University of Rice. Well, it's time for another commercial break, but when we come back, I'll sit down in the forum with two of Sports Times analysts. And later, we'll have our top five plays of the weekend. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned to Sports Showtime on Tiger TV.